Welcome back to Soccer Card United. It's episode 167 of the greatest soccer card podcast in the world, hosted by the top two card show attendees in Europe. Oh. Uh, I'm Jason. That's Enzo. Hi, Enzo. Hello, Jason. Um, How are you? Oh, my God. So, I'm, I'm good. So I've been just, sick yes. for a week. Mm-hmm. Monday was the worst day of it, but it just dragged me the rest of the time. I thought I'd be fresh to go Thursday, but it wasn't to be the case. Mm. So apologies for the lack of podcast for the last week, but I have been dying of a COVID-like illness that wasn't COVID. A mystery COVID-like illness. Yeah, be careful out there, people. A flu or something. Something that everyone seems to have, and people that I haven't been in contact with are telling me, oh, yeah, that, I, I had some weird shit. I did COVID tests, it wasn't COVID, and I was like, hmm. Right. So some weird stuff going on out there in the streets, so be very careful in this summer heat. If you're out in the streets, in the heat, be careful. Be careful out there. Um, but I'm feeling very good now. And you're you're you're, be- you're better just in time. Obviously, the podcast is back, but you're also better just in time for this Saturday. Yes. When we will be in Hamburg. Yes. At the uh, European Trading Card Tour. Mm. Um, let me just get. It. We were actually announced as uh, we vendors because we're going to be there uh, with tables with three, three, three tables. tables. Now I know some people are listening and they're thinking, "Oh, three tables!" I didn't realize the guys had a. Uh, all the infrastructure required for tree table. Mm. We don't really. We don't really. <laughs> we don't, the answer is we don't really. Um, but we are going nonetheless. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm very excited. Um, I was uh, asked to, for the vendor announcer, I was asked to submit a piece of text for how mm. we should be announced. And I said the following. Sock Cards United is a hobby brand uh, from Ireland. Their online store, SockCardsUnited.com, sells sealed boxes from Tops and Panini shipped worldwide. They also happen to have, quote, the world's greatest soccer card podcast, which is available wherever you get your podcast. Oh, yes. So. That's yeah, us. That's us. That's all we can say. That's us. Um, Okay. So we're in Hamburg. If anyone's going to be in Hamburg on uh, Saturday, please let us know. The twenty fourth of um, reach out to us. Reach out to us and let us know because it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of good fun, I believe. Uh, I'm just having a look at some of the other people that are gonna if be anyone there. Has any Hamburg tips? Unless you have some Jason built in. Um, let us know. Yeah, let us know. I've been to Hamburg once before. Okay, there you go. And uh, I remember they were they were showing uh, the Lion King, uh, the 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 music, the like theater show of the Lion King. Uh, and it was something like Der Konig, Der Loven or something, whatever it was. And it was on a big, like, like floating kind of like pontoon down by the river. It was like this big, big floating theater. Oh, yeah. Where they were showing The Lion King. Um, we have some shenanigans to do Friday. Because Sunday morning we're flying back. Mm-hmm. So Friday will be our day for hamburging. Yes. Hamburgers in Hamburg? They're not known for that? Um, I, I'm, I'm sure they are. I, I When I was there, I... Uh, was eating something called Bismarck herring. Oh my god! Um, which is pickled herring, and mm-hmm. it's uh, not to everyone's taste. No, it wouldn't be for me. I liked it a lot. I was also at a uh, this thing that they have called a fish market, which is just fish market, and it's like this like beer hall slash like market slash kind of farmers market, fish market, beer hall. There was a rock show going on, but it's all in the morning. So mm. the fishing boats come in. So you're at like kind of like what is like an outdoor kind of festival environment, but it's six in the morning. It's crazy. It's crazy stuff. Listen to this. Yeah. Is Hamburg cheap or expensive? Google Google search. Mm-hmm. Hamburg has become one of the most one of Germany's most costly large cities due mm. to the cost of living, which is almost at the level of the top ten most expensive German cities. Then another one, Jason. This yep. is the last one I'll leave us on. Why is Hamburg so expensive? Oh my god. Do you know the answer to this? No. But how come Hamburg is so expensive? Mm. Possibly it's down. This sounds like a German wrote this. And it's translated into English. Possibly it's down to the fact that Hamburg boasts the highest density of millionaires in Germany and one multinational corporation after another romps around the city. And it's with this ever-growing economy it creates jobs alongside prospering prospects. What a city to have a card show Let's in. hope some of this high-density millionaires... Stop by the Sock Card United triple table. Certainly. So if any Hamburg-based millionaires are listening... As I'm sure they are. We'll see you on Saturday. See you on Saturday, big men. Um, okay, so on this show today, we're going to do Hobby HQ as usual. Okay. Um, but then instead of your football week, we're going to do our season review segment. Yes. 
where people are going to tell us what they want us to talk about for the end of the season. Okay. Can I say, Jason? Yeah. It's wonderful being back in this room with you. Well, you're very welcome back. I tell you, I, I was walking around last week like a uh, like a lost puppy, a bit hang dog. I was. I kept saying, "What? I don't feel right. What's it? I haven't podcasted. Yeah. What do you do? What do I do? What's my reason for being? If not to podcast, to be is to podcast. Can I give you just a little PSA update? Uh huh. We have a big PSA sixty four card submission. Not all cards are ours, and it's in QA check one, Jason. So it's been graded. It's been assembled, and now they're checking the grades again. Yeah, just in case. But they've been doing that for some time now. Mm. I'm getting fidgety. Hurry up, PSA. I want my my Jude. PSA, if you're listening, he wants his Jude. Jude just moved to Real Madrid. I want to... Take advantage. I want to take advantage. This is the moment. Um, Buy the rumor. Sell the news. Right, okay. The checklist was added to the Tops UCC Chrome uh, thing on Cardboard Connections and other places where you can get your... Uh, checklist info and then so probably the biggest news was the multi-autos multi-autos um, there's a whole series of uh, dual and triple autographs dual and triple autograph goodness mm. so in the we can go through some of them the jewels you got for Man United Bruno Fernandes Anthony for uh, Real Madrid you, for AC Milan Real Madrid you got Cafu and Roberto Carlos yeah Brazilian AC, fullbacks Milan and, okay cool yeah they're mixing clubs here, Jason. Okay. Don't get confused. I'm not confused. I'm I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Uh Fabio Cavallo and Alejandro Garnacho on both sides of the Liverpool Manchester United uh the, rivalry. There's a card in here for us, by the way. I don't know if you've seen it. I don't know if I have. Uh, Gonzalo Ramos Moreira Jr. for uh, Benfica. Uh Ronaldo and Luis Figo for Real Madrid. Roy King Gattuso. Oh! Holy smokes. Oh! This is the this is the soccer United Grail card. That's it. The combative midfielder soccer United Grail card. Yes, oh, we have to get one. We have to get one of them. We have to. Um, Lampard, Gerrard. That's cool. Classic. Haaland, Messi. Interesting. That's yeah. Interesting is a good word. Interesting. I mean, the two Ballon d'Or uh, candidates. Mm-hmm. It's a good way to yeah, do that. Yeah, for one. this, for the this, the year it was released. These were the two front runners for the Ballon d'Or. There you go. A moment in time. A moment in time. Uh, Passing at the guard. Yes. Uh, Iniesta De Bruyne okay midfield maestros I suppose yeah uh, pe- two of Pep's Pep's men f- Pep's midfielders Pep's uh, treble winning midfielders Dennis Bergkamp Patrick Kluivert uh, Dutch excellent Dutch Pirlo Kaká ah, we love it lovely, we love it lovely, lovely we stuff we love it Harry Kane Hyunmin Son wouldn't be a dual autograph checklist without Harry Kane Hyunmin Son no people love that um, Musiala Bellingham very much Jude class together yeah bunch in there um, Grealish Mason Mount one for the English one for the English fans uh, Neymar Messi at PSG together bros bros uh, Messi for FC Barcelona Cristiano Ronaldo for Real Madrid let's go and, uh, and Messi uh, Ronaldo dual autograph a true moment in time a moment in time that spans over a decade an era an era I love yeah. that yeah 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 very cool Benjamin Sesko for Salzburg and Dusan Vlajevic for Juventus. So, they're not from the same place. Okay. I uh, almost said they were. And then... Sesko Vlajevic. Slovenia? Slovakia? What's Vlajevic Sesko? is Serbian. Serbian? My, oh my and God. Sesko is Slovenian, I think. Okay. And then Neymar Jr., Vinny Jr. Oh, the juniors. The juniors. The junior Julotto. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Okay. Brazilian, obviously. Can I say? Yeah. Was there a single miss on that dual autograph checklist? No, I think they were all pretty much... Uh, on the money. On the money. They were all pretty great. Love it. Congratulations. Um, then, the Chrome triple autograph. So, first of all, you have the uh, Arsenal uh, heritage. Uh, Tony Adams, David Seaman, Martin Keown. So, a goalkeeper and two centre-halves. Oh, what a partnership. The Arsenal defence partnership. Uh, then you have uh, Joanne Musiala, Pedri and Bellingham. I call that Jude Class triple auto. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The three leading lights of the Jude Class. Unbelievable. Uh, then you have uh, more heritage. You have Franco Baresi for Milan, Dino Zoff for Juventus, and Franz Beckenbauer for FC Bayern München. That's yeah, like man. your that's your kind of uh, your 20th century greats. That's unbelievable. That's very good. As is the next one. Uh, Gerard, Scholes, Lampard. They couldn't fit all into the same midfield for England, but they can fit onto the same card for tops. There you go. Um... Vinny Jr., Robert Lewandowski, and Neymar for Real Madrid, Barcelona, and PSG. Someone said that was a weird one. It kind of is a weird one. 
I don't hate it. No, but it's just kind of random. It's a random... You're not seeing the same level of... Uh... No, I don't really see the... You could say the same thing about the Brazy, Zoff, Beckenbauer, but they're kind of joined by an era. Yeah, but these boys, like, I think Lewandowski up front, two wingers either side, you know, you have a bit of... Could be, yeah. They all played in uh, La Liga at one point, I don't know. Yeah. But I get it, I get it, it's a bit more out there. Uh, Michael Owen, uh, who was uh, pre- previous to, to Jude Bellingham, was the last Englishman to play for Real Madrid. Uh, Patrick Clivert and Henrik Larsson, so that's for Real Madrid, Barca and Celtic. Okay. Okay. That's a weird one. Yeah. Xabi Alonso, Steven... I mean, all foxes in the box? Uh... Yeah. 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 You can get away with that? <laughs> maybe. Um, I saw how I picked your Cliver, but maybe I should. Maybe I ought to. Maybe you ought to. Maybe I ought to. Maybe I ought to change my <laughs> way of thinking. Uh, Xabi Alonso, Steven Gerrard, Danny Murphy. That's the Liverpool tree dragon head meme for uh, midfielders. For <laughs> all Danny Murphy. Card. Look at this one. Maldini, Kaka, Crespo. Come on. Come on. AC Milan getting a massive treatment. Massive club. We're a massive club. Let's face it. Uh, here... It is Cristiano Ronaldo for Real Madrid, Lionel Messi for FC Barcelona, and Luka Modric for Real Madrid. I kept incorrectly saying the last three people doing Ballon d'Or, completely forgetting that Karim Benzema had just done it. Mm. But three bar, three Ballon d'Or winners nonetheless. If they could have had Karim Benzema in there. But like, who else would you put on a triple O with those two, Messi and Ronaldo? I don't think you should. I don't think you'd. You should. You should. No, I, I was saying put in Ronaldo, Messi, uh, or no, no, sorry, Ronaldo, Benzema, Modric. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. That's you like know. the the Don Ross. I think there's a beautiful auto similar to that back in the day. Yeah, but um, yeah, I you can't. Re- I mean, I understand that for the Ballon d'Or, but yeah, I get what you're saying. You're pulling that card, and you're almost disappointed. Well, almost. it's kind of you're going like, well, who you know, Messi and Messi and Ronaldo, class, class. But then you put Modric in there, and all of a sudden you're kind of you're disrupting the center of gravity of the card. I think. Mm. Um, and then uh, you have Ronaldo, Haaland, Messi. That's cool. That's, that's cool, cool because that's something that you see on a leaf card. Yeah. And you're kind of like, that never happens. Yeah. That's kind of like uh, what you'd make, like a leaf or a custom card or something would yeah. be that. Yeah. Whereas like now they're doing it and I, I don't hate it. And then Iniesta, Messi, Xavi. That's lovely. That's beautiful. That's, that's a triple stuff. Off. Yeah. You know, Quad Auto Trobus gets in there. Yeah. But like, that's beautiful. Um, but in fairness, I don't think the triple autos miss either. Maybe, maybe the Danny Murphy, but I understand why he's there. No, I think overall, like it's 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 an Flat. exciting checklist, and uh, I like the use of double and triple autos. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Panini have always been better at doing multiple autos than tops. But the problem with Panini's are that they're just completely random players. You mean better in terms of they've added them into the checklist? Yeah, they've yeah, we've yeah, had yeah, them, yeah. we've seen them, but um, but there's nothing there to be seen. Yeah. Then we also have two cards in the upcoming tops chrome from the Grail set checklist. Let's go. So four of nine and eight of nine. Mm. are going to be out there in Chrome. The Haaland from Flagship was one of nine, was it? Yep. Right. Uh, you got Wonder Kids, you got Youth Quake. Uh, one per light box, Youth Quake is. Oh, one per light box. And then you got your one autograph uh, per hobby. So that's kind of exciting. Uh, we talked before about the colour match uh, parallels. Yep. Zidane autos. Zidane autos, all that stuff. So the slated release date is June 28th. Which is in nine days' time. Wow. Jeez, no double, triple autos. Are they the big, the big chase? They're the big chase for sure. Apart from the Grail. Apart from the Grail. Apart from the Grail. How could I forget the Grail? Um, but yeah, I think that I think the Messi-Ronaldo auto... Yeah, when they put that in Museum and they also put that Inception first year, they were huge yeah. cards. Rightly so. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Really and so. like ju- judging on the Musiala Jude Jude Lotto that's in the graphic artwork I think they're going to be really nice cards yeah they do they look just for anyone who hasn't seen it they do look uh, nice I was going to say we haven't seen anything there's been no jewels in Chrome before has there no no Um. okay we also got a first look speaking of museum got a first look at the upcoming museum the most interesting thing about it was something you pointed out to me Enzo which is on card autographs and oh it's just Champions League. Oh, sorry. That was what I was going to say. It's just Champions League. Not, not, none of this, you, you wave a club competition's business. No. No, Europa League. You're playing the Europa League, Europa Conference League. You don't belong in a museum. Wow. What a statement. Champions League has its own museum. And it's on card autographs as well. There's Kaka. He has one. <laughs> There's Kaka. 
So, this is interesting. Delivering a premium car product, 22, 23, Tops Museum, UEFA Champions League, keeps the one pack per box format. Every hobby box contains one autograph, one relic, and one autograph relic. The framed autograph cards act as a case hit. Case hit alert. Case hit alert. Case hit alert, people. It's going to be a case hit. You're going to get one framed autograph in a case. hobby case. That's a case hit, people. Yeah. So that's, that's an official case hit. Quite exciting. We cannot underestimate the fact that that's a case hit. Yeah. For sure. Um, then we also have... Uh, I'm pretty sure that we didn't have of 125 parallels last year. I think we only went up to 99 last year. So okay. that's obviously a slight drawback, but... You know, then we have this big mad. Uh, what do you call this? Booklet. A booklet. Got all sorts of fellas on this booklet. You got Neymar for PSG. You got uh, Iniesta for Barca. Do you think this is a group of dual booklets, or is this a mad booklet? This Looks is like one big mad booklet. booklet. Oh mate, why well, I don't understand? This is one big mad booklet for sure. Yeah, ten autos in a six panel booklet. It says it right there. Yeah. So that's mad. You got your Neymar, you got your Iniesta, you got your Lampard and Didier Drogba for Chelsea. Class. Could even be its own booklet. That's what I'm saying. It's, yeah. You got, uh, who you got? Marco Van Basten and Ansu Fati. Uh, you got Kevin De Bruyne, Hyun Min Son, Cristiano Ronaldo in a sporting Lisbon kit. Love that. And then Leo Messi in a Barca kit. It's kind of wandering into Panini territory here. The Ansu Fati there is out of shit out of. It was sorts. I feel like there's all legends on that card, and there's Antu Fahi. Is that yeah. fair to say? Yeah. Why have Chelsea got two? That's my gripe. That's my gripe. I think Barca have two. Yeah. Did I you... think it should be one. Per, you know. Yeah, basically, what's going on with that? What's going on? That's the like... Messi Ronaldo at the end is unbelievable. If that was standalone, I'm sure it yeah. might be as well. Like there might be a version of it. Yeah. Um. Obviously, when Messi and Ronaldo are on the same card, you'd rather it be. Real Madrid Barcelona or Messi depicted as a youth yeah you kind of want them to be depicted as kind of parallel to each other same age same yeah. era um, the answer fight is a weird one now who knows if this is a real card well this could be like this could be like, no, on the so. checklist it might not be this 8 or this 10 oh I see is this even 10 yeah yeah yeah. yeah. because uh, subjects are subject to change or whatever they say yeah I don't yeah. know I just like the idea of a big book Mm. So I wonder is that going to be a situation where if you get that you don't get anything else? Yeah, probably is. You just it's like but like a, how do you divvy like that a magician up? like t- taking how do you divvy that up on a break, Jason? Imagine you have the Ansu Fahi slot. Yeah, imagine the carnage. Per- uh, Percy's only. Percy's only. No, but imagine you you do the Ansu Fahi slot and then do a big roulette wheel and you win. You win that for buying Ansu Fahi. Wow, bit of jeopardy for you. And to find right, spot. buy the Marco Van Basten spot. <laughs> Get involved. Legendary Inc. We have the framed autos with the on card. Oh, yes. Kaka. Kaka started signing. Like, I think Kaka must have lost. Uh, got, got financial trouble recently <laughs> or something because he's signing like there's no tomorrow. No, I think they just got to his agent. Right. Uh, nice stuff. Good stuff. Museum always a, a quality, quality. Always product. looks great. Never really does well. On the market, like on the market, it doesn't like go to the moon. No, but that's kind of good. It does its business early, quietly and early, and, and just you know. Apparent release date for that one, Jason, is the twelfth of July. Okay, release is coming thick and fast. Thick and fast, just a couple of weeks before the national. Mm. The national in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, attended by both of us. Listen, the most. What was it? Uh, I don't know. It was the most well-traveled podcast to any card show in all of Europe. Yeah, I think I described further. us individually as the greatest card show attendees in Europe. I don't know about that. Maybe people who have seen us at card shows can judge whether or not we're very good attendees. I think we're decent. I think we're okay. We're not right. I think we could do a better job at engaging, but we're there, we're there running our own stall. Yeah, we're busy. So we're busy. Don't let them get you down. I won't. Now, I do have something... I missed the podcast partly because I didn't get to report on the words of Mr. Rich Mueller at Sports Collectors Daily. <laughs> but the podcast is back, which means Rich Mueller is back with Sports Collectors Daily. With the following story. eBay have announced that they are to limit break listings to pre-approved accounts. If you want to break cases or boxes on eBay, you'll have to hope the company has seen fit to approve you. eBay sent a bit of spice there, I thought, in the opening line from Rich. Mm. Kind of saying like, you know, having a... Or eBay are cleaning it up. Yeah. 
eBay sent emails to users who have ha- who sell or have sold break spots uh, in for cases, box or packs on Wednesday, outlining a new policy that would allow only certain pre-approved sellers to list it, its platforms. Uh, we want to take steps to support this experience while also ensuring a greater level of consistency for our buyer community and eBay spokesperson told Sports Collectors Daily. The policy won't be implemented until July 18th, but likely will impact a large number of smaller volume sellers of break spots. Some collectors reacting on social media saw the move as a good one, reducing the number of break listings while taking an active role in vetting the large number of breakers on its platform. However, it was a tough pill to swallow for those who suddenly learned they'd be no longer able to offer breaks. Here's a quote from one of them. The news today came out of left field and was a complete shock, remarked Michael Borders, a collector of more than 30 years who sells break spots and cards online under the name Warrior65. Mm-hmm. He spent 19 years as a teacher before resigning prior to the 22-23 school year in order to ensure his autistic son could attend therapy. What? I love that the... But I'll skip the la- I, was, I was laughing at uh, calling the school year the way you call a season. Yeah, I love 20, that 22, well. 23 school year. The playoffs. Uh, he calls the exam season the playoffs at the end. Uh, so he this this guy he's, he's he's running his online business he's uh, he's breaking on eBay to support the care of his child and he says I don't do a massive volume of breaks but it definitely helps me provide for my family in a small way on top of my storefront I literally started the process of increasing my product supply and lowering my cost this month which makes this even more crushing I spoke with their leadership team but I was told there's nothing I can do they said it was a business decision but it seems they are simply catering to large breakers regardless of customer experience Enzo what's your feelings on this um, I don't know because I feel like on eBay like anytime people have loaded breaks list and you can just type in minus break and you don't see it mm. so I don't really know what they're doing but I do think like everything eBay is doing is an attempt to combat the whatnots of the world so they're they're saying they're looking at, at whatnot and everyone else and they're saying one one weak spot in the armour of whatnot seems to be ongoing controversies yes so we're going to make sure that we can kind of like position ourselves as the home of that of like uh, safe quality. Yeah, you, you can't, but you can't. eBay can't do that at all. Mm. It's a weird one, especially here. He says obviously there's a hundred feedback, this, that, and the other. So it's really tough to know. Yeah. What what benefit eBay sees in preventing sales on its platform? Not a collector here. And Not obviously a, a reason to it. Obviously a reason to it. eBay have said. They were strategic with this. Yeah. But it could have been as simply strategic as like we're putting something like this caused such a stir that I think a lot of people are like, you can buy break spots on eBay. Mm. You know? Yeah. But it's kind of just, it's like a way for them to kind of almost reset, reset their, that category. Look at this. The eBay live platform, Mm -hmm. the eBay live platform is something that, that the company has been touting of late, but it's, but they say approved breakers won't be required to use that platform in order to keep their status. So like eBay Live, is that happening? Is that happening soon? Mm. Everyone looks at the live selling, which has kind of changed the game. Yeah. And they want to get a beast. That's why Fanatics Live is in the works. eBay Live is in the works. Mm-hmm. I don't know if YouTube Live. YouTube Live. YouTube Live. You can selling. already go live. No, but maybe. selling. Live selling. Kick. Oh, I don't Kick know. Kick is coming out. Don't know if you've seen Kick. Heard about Kick. What's your thoughts? I don't have any thoughts. Nathan Thurston of Blue Ridge Sports Cards in Virginia says he began doing pick your team breaks every two weeks earlier this spring. While it wasn't a major revenue source for him, he said he used breaks to diversify online selling he's been doing for the last five years. He said, I think the more breakers we get to choose from, the better. eBay already protects buyers to a large extent, so I don't understand why they feel they need to cut up the smaller guys. It was a way for me to post auctions, then hang out with friends and new collectors every other Saturday. There aren't a lot of platforms to run auctions for breaks, and it was easy because I primarily sell my singles there. Hmm. I don't I think this is a this is you know it's a very it's part of a pattern of the industry is being constantly disrupted right now there's a there's a scramble among companies to get a hold of this new thing this new industry this new post fanatics uh, landscape landscape and I think we're going to see a lot of decisions from a lot of different companies over the next few years that collectors might kind of go like what the hell because you know they're trying to figure it out I feel like since we started this podcast Jason the industry has changed week to week Mm -hmm. there's always been a huge announcement every week never a dull moment never a dull moment some people like that are outside the hobby hobby life part of my life say like how do you do a podcast twice a week yeah 
about sports cards. And I'm like, you have no idea. Yeah, you wouldn't believe how. You wouldn't believe mm. what is going on in this industry on a daily basis. Yeah, it's... There's all sorts happening. It's constant. It's constantly turning. Never, never a slow news day. Like, I'm sitting here wondering, is Fanatics Live going to be a global platform that we'll be able to sell on? Uh, experience tells us absolutely not. You think they won't have Ireland? No, I don't think so. There's a man driving a tractor outside the window. I don't know why. Uh, I suppose he was cutting some grass or something. Anyway, um, we asked you for your... That's Hobby HQ. We asked you for your um, thoughts on the season. And um, you gave some. So here we go. We're going to Twitter now uh, to see what people said. Uh, uh, we want to hear from you your questions, moments, and opinions on the 22-23 season. Was it watching Haaland explode? Was it pulling a messy prison? What was it? People replied. Hmm. Uh, first thing Simon comes in and says uh, opinion Haaland looks better with a short back and sides because in the graphic here Haaland has kind of big Viking mm. hair going on it's a big opinion from Simon big opinion from Simon to start start us off um, I think Haaland uh, does what he wants does what he wants scores when he wants although not in the big games not in the big games uh, got beat by Scotland the other night um, shocking shocking got his goal though Peno, 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 Peno didn't win it. Um, do cards of ha- here's James Darcy. Do cards of Haaland in his City jersey now have more desirability than his Dortmund jersey because of the treble and his historic success in the EPL and Champions League? Well, if you remember, James, long for a long, long time on this podcast, mm. we have been saying that when Haaland moves, Ooh. his Salzburg cards would suddenly become prominent because who cares where he played in between where he's where he started and where he is now I still think the high end market has a lot to catch up with yeah I think Haaland is a really weird case because no matter what it seems like his Bundesliga Chrome is his desired rookie card is the mm-hmm. most expensive rookie card and that's of course an Dortmund kit and I think that's going to be a very hard thing for the market to to, to overcome to and overcome yeah yeah because all, all of his premium Salzburg stuff for the most part came after he'd already moved to Dortmund so it's all a big grey area yeah the only truth is the foosball but that's not premium. So people don't care. That's not premium. But that's the only truth. You're talking about stickers. If you're talking truth, that's the only truth. In terms of... Uh, uh, in terms of... Austrian Bundesliga release. Okay. That's mad. Yeah. You know, and there's a few other bits out there. You know, some match attacks in the Salzburg kit. But again, there's a grey area kind of associated with most things. He has the tops now, which again, is also a really good one. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, for some reason, that Bundesliga Chrome... It's that premium, premium juice. People love it. It depends. Because I think you're talking about your... is Dortmund jersey and his City jersey. And I think both of those... Uh, are iconic in their own way. Iconic in their own way. And, and you kind of just... It comes back to who, who exactly is collecting Haaland. But at the same time, you look at the City jersey. Like even just that with the red collar, red, red, yeah. red accents. That's an iconic kit now because they went on and done a treble. In yeah. 20 years, there's going to be so much nostalgia associated with that jersey. Mm-hmm. And I, I think Haaland in his first year in City, I think there's significance to those cards. Are they more significant than Dortmund? Not more significant than his first Dortmund. And his rookie Dortmund. The Bunde, Bundesliga Chrome. But anything like after that 2019 season, I think his first year City means more. Yeah. So it's like goes rookie season, then skips. Skips out everything in between. Yeah. The filler. Yeah. From the filler to the killer. Speaking mm-hmm. of killer, let's listen to more questions. Alex says, definitely enjoying Haaland going crazy. It'll be fun to watch him try for 60 goals in all competitions next year. I do think he'll get there. My soccer collecting journey started with vintage on Haaland. Getting my BVB autograph authenticated was a highlight. Now trying for an official city auto, Prism Select, etc. And uh, Alex has uh, helpfully included this um, picture of a Dixie Dean uh, and Haaland next to each other. Mm, Fighting it out for all the records. Fighting it out for all the records. Um, I know a guy that just looks exactly like Dixie Dean and it freaks me out every time it's great um, it's a scary looking man yeah I mean he, to be honest he looks a bit less like war torn than, than Dixie Dean but uh, there's the authentic Haaland and then there's a Dakar Haaland uh, okay Jake the Mailman comes in and gives us an organised version of this request request and says favourite set all select releases Mm. Favourite insert, Visionary slash Renaissance. Nah, he didn't choose there. He couldn't. Okay. Favourite hit, Messi, Beautiful Game, Gold, all three of five. Oh, 
Oh my god, it's beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. Holy smoke. I would love it. Jake. Jake, stop. Jake, stop it. Look at that. I think everything in his Argentina kit from the World Cup is just so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that Argentina kit, obviously post World Cup, so it has the World Cup winner badge or whatever. Uh, I don't think that one does. Does that have two stars or three stars? Because that has the uh, Cup of America, doesn't it? Uh, I think yeah. Has, yeah, Cup of America two stars. So that's like a pre World Cup jersey or the yeah. World Cup jersey. Looks so nice. It's so iconic. Jason, he won the World Cup. Let's not forget. And the gold border of the card oh. matching the gold uh, of the Argentina badge. It's crazy. Brilliant. Brilliant stuff. If I hit that, you'd be like, whoa. I wouldn't know what to do. You'd be like, let's go. I wouldn't sell it. Let me tell you. Well, for the right price. No, it looks too nice. That's class. I want to Google what a base card of that does. Um, favorite SEU episode 101. I don't remember that one. And favorite game, the World Cup final. What a game that was, by the way. That came up on my Twitter feed. The World Cup final? Yeah. I'm talking about a beautiful game. Oh, I typed in final. Yeah, someone tweeted the full World Cup final. And I almost watched it, but I didn't. Okay. I said... You said, uh, yes. Control yourself, Ed. Yeah. Please. At least, if you, if you want to watch it again, go back and watch the highlights. Lord knows there was enough action. It was unbelievable. Um, right, we're on Instagram now. Drop your thoughts, I said. And Kevin came straight in and Kevin said, Watching Haaland and Lewandowski have success in other leagues and countering the yeah, but it's the Bundesliga argument about their past season. Bundesliga tax. If they could, if Lewandowski could could be the top scorer in La Liga and Barca could win the league and Haaland could score a load of goals for City, then obviously Bundesliga scoring is transferable. It's a transferable mm. skill. That's true. So, and I happen to know that Kevin's a Lewandowski collector, so mm. a bit of an agenda there, but I've, I'll allow it. This uh, beautiful game, Messi autograph, is yeah. class across the board. It's about 1,500 to 2,000 euro. Just for the base, beautiful game? Yep. Wow. And there's a green cracked ice, which I believe comes from the uh Oh, the, the uh, yeah, the Blasters. Oh, no, it's not the Blasters, sorry, the Fat Packs. The Fat Packs. And it looks so good. Although I don't love the green, you know. Yeah. It doesn't match that card, if you imagine, but it's still... But the base, the the the, the blue, the blue is an of fifteen has blue 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 on the sides. Jason, one just sold for two and a half thousand three days ago. There you have it. There I have it. Uh, Sports card social says you've got a top at West Ham. Of course, you've got a top at West Ham. They won the Europa Conference League, mm. champions of Europe. They said the Fiorentina. You'll never sing that. That's heartbreaking. Uh, Declan Rice, uh, going to be heading off. Somewhere. Um, Apparently, Eric Ten Hag's going mental at the Man United board because he wants to challenge Arsenal for that. To challenge for Declan Rice? Yeah. But they can't because they're too busy trying to sell the club for f- six billion. Yeah. And Declan Rice doesn't want to go to Manchester. He lives in London. He's a happy man in London. He's happy as, as Larry in London. Although he seemed happy in an Irish kit back in the day. Yeah, this is not a man to be trusted. Mm, this is a snake. This is a serpentine man. Um. Right, so well done. We say well done to West Ham. We say well done to David Moyes. Absolutely. Um, and we hope that West Ham can have a good season in the in the Europa League next big year. Win. The big win. Um, okay. The general card says Camavinga is the best left back in the world. It's true. It's true. I mean, he got Apart from Teo Hernandez, of course. A bit caught out in the old uh, semi final against City. But who wouldn't? But who wouldn't? You know, he's definitely seventy the best. Uh, Definitely best left back in the world that's not a left back. Yes. I'll give him that much. Um, Kamavinga is one of those players that was a kind of a lost season for him hobby-wise. Mm. Because he obviously got pushed into the left back position. It would have been better for us as in the hobby if he was able to play in that midfield role. Where he had such an impact last season. Probably. Yeah. Where he's kind of coming on making those like cameo appearances and winning games in the Champions League. Mm. He was the last twenty-minute man, the closer. But now, what's going to happen with that midfield, Jason? Don't know. Don't know. Uh, Ajax Sports Cards says, "Watching the here's the, here's a, here's a moment for you." Oh my! When I ask for moments, I want moments. Yes. And this is a moment. He's painting a picture. Watch the world. Watching the World Cup final in New York City with my son near Times Square, only to celebrate the World Cup win with ten thousand Argentinians. Pulling a Messi kaboom, Beckham kaboom, and two Lukaku kabooms in a row. Also watching Ajax having a crap season. And watching the USA beat Mexico again. Oh, and the Mexican fans still bitching about no era penal. Oh my god. 
I mean, that's I ex- sounds like I wish I had the season that I sports cards had. Yeah, listen, what is what a season you describe? It, you describe it with such the intersection of the sport and the cards and the this it all was and happening. That. It was all happening. And your boxes had what they needed to have in them. Unbelievable stuff. Can I say what a season for Katie McCabe? Yeah, who's just been named Arsenal Women's Player of the Season. Wow, Champions League Team of the Season and Arsenal's Player of the Season heading into a World Cup. Legend. Legend. Captain. Leader. Legend. Irish. Irish. Let's go. Best Irish player in the world for me, Jeff. Uh, Tim says, with Haaland's historic season, do you think there'll be any long... Oh, here you go. It's one for you, Enzo. Do you think there'll be any long-term impact on owning a first edition sticker, a football sticker, as opposed to second or third edition? Thanks. Love the show. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Tim. Enzo. I think so. Because okay. I think right now a lot of people want that first edition sticker. I think most people don't really know the difference. Yeah. And I think it's up to PSA to actually distinguish, mm. which is going to be very hard now because so many have been graded. Yeah. Um, it's also hard because the first, second, and third edition kind of came from when you were in the trenches and you actually seen them get released week, week, week. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah, to be there. If you're talking to PSA, they'd be saying, prove to me that's a first versus a second edition. Yes. Which came first? We don't like prove, prove the timeline, but you only know the timeline if you were there. I'm trying to get Panini to tell you the timeline. They're just going to say, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. So for me, ideally, if I have a PSA 10 foosball sticker, I want it to be first edition. Yeah. If it's third edition, I'm happy enough. The second edition has the white on it, which is very uh, obviously different. I don't like that one. In an ideal world, the first edition would be... The go-to. The go-to. But we don't live in an ideal world, Tim. It's not like Pokemon where it says first edition no. plastered across it, which makes all the difference. So... You know, okay. Skipping cards. Uh, I want to see if so. Just kind of looking forward. I want to see if the U.S. Women's National Team Don Rose cards do anything notable during the World Cup. It depends on whether the U.S. Women's National Team do anything notable during the World Cup. Oh, and it also depends what Panini are releasing for the World Cup. Yeah. Tell you what, though, uh, that Katarina Macario signed for Chelsea. Mmm. So that's a big move. Champions League semi finalist this year. Okay. Um. Excited about that. A rookie going there. Yeah, uh, best team in England by many people's standard. Standard. Uh, JD ninety six has a lot to say, but okay. I appreciate it because you know. Because you said paint the picture. The Premier League season felt like one of the strongest in terms of the twenty teams competing. We may see for a while, and maybe one of the most competitive ever. Especially looking at the relegation battle, the money spent in January, and number of managerial sackings. Then what does that mean? What do you mean? I'm just thinking. I'm thinking about. That's a very that's a big statement there from JD ninety six. Well, I would personally say the Premier League is much much less competitive and much weaker than it was say twenty years ago. I don't know. I feel like in this scenario, mm-hmm. obviously Arsenal had a good run for the title for a very long time, which yeah. added a bit of excitement. The top four was very up and down most season. No one really knew. Like wait, wait, Newcastle creeping into top four. Yeah, with Brighton doing what they did. Yeah. Obviously, Liverpool having an off-season, Chelsea having an off-season, mm-hmm. Tottenham having a bit of a Tottenham season. And then you look at the teams that were potentially getting relegated, you're talking Leicester City, Everton, um, and yeah, a few other bits. I, yeah, I there was a lot going on, I think, in the league. There was year. a lot going on, but I think there was definitely, like, there's definitely a league of, of kind of, a lot of also-rans, like a lot of like relegation, battlers, strugglers. I don't think the Premier League is really... A lot of things they say about it, like, you know, like, you need 40 points to stay up. That hasn't been true in a long, long time. Mm. Um, anyone can beat anyone. Oh, only Brentford beat Man City. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, it's, you know... Uh, Brentford I, B is... They signed someone recently. I think they made uh, Kevin Shad a permanent, uh, I believe. He was a Bundesliga rookie from 21-22. Okay. Very highly rated. German under 21 international. But anyway... Um, I think it was a bit... I think it was a, maybe an exciting Premier League season, but I think... Jason, you have 14th place West Ham winning the European Trophy. Yes. Which is the strength of the Premier League. Yeah, I suppose... I think Arsenal had a, such a good season that it made Man City's dominance look very different. Yeah. The gap between first and third is 14 points. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. So, no, I think it was... I think it was... A, a, you know, it was... 
I just don't think it was maybe one of the most competitive seasons ever because you look at like it's more competitive than the F1 certainly more competitive than the F1 Let which is at it. this point not even really a sport it's gone mad at the moment Um, but now that Luton are in the top flight surely they're competitive now but that, that means the championship is competitive Luton are in the top flight Jason you better put respect on that Okay, also, we had a lot of... JD96 keeps us going. Also, we had a lot of uh, exciting stories across Europe to follow. And follow them, we did. Napoli winning the title. Lons flying in France and getting Champions League in second place. Union Berlin getting Champions League. Uh, Aldevirel stoppage time goal in Belgium. Did you see that? Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And Dortmund going so close. But not quite. To toppling Bayern. All that with a World Cup in between. Think we were spoiled. That's true. Yeah. And it's no coincidence that all this crazy stuff happened in a World Cup year. That was in the middle of the season. Yeah. True. And so in terms of... We should talk about the World Cup. In terms of um, having a World Cup in the middle of the season, how do you feel about that compared to a Summer World Cup? I prefer the Summer World Cup. Yeah. Um, obviously, the World Cup that we just had was one of the most incredible World Cups that we ever got to witness because we got to witness absolute greatness Yeah. Uh, in a final that lived up to the expectation of what it should have been. Mm. Uh, so that was incredible. It was um, definitely a World Cup that got better as it went on. Yeah. Does it take a bit of shine off a treble? Maybe. Maybe it does. Maybe your your main striker didn't have to go to the World Cup, got to rest up during the winter. Yeah. And then got to never look tired. Yeah. You know? But then you could say, you know, Julian Alvarez won the World Cup, but he got to rest most of the season on the bench. Yeah. So it, it takes a bit of the shine off it. You, you didn't gruelingly go through a full season. You got a break in between. Mm. It, obviously, a lot of your players didn't get a break. They went to the World Cup, but different circumstances. A lot of them played a couple of games. Yeah, no, I think... Uh, I prefer it in the summer, just because like it gives such a buzz in the summer. It's better. It's better. But I understood why it happened, ha- ha- happened in the winter. And I was delighted for all involved, especially Leo Messi. Um, I, mean, I personally loved watching the World Cup during the winter. Mm, brightened up your those uh, gloomy nights. The gloomy nights lit up by wonderful football. I have here some uh, more questions. Okay. Uh, Luis says thoughts on Francisco Conceição uh, I think Francisco Conceição looked bright at Porto but that may have been because his dad was the coach and kept picking him and then he went to Ajax and Ajax didn't have a good season so low risk high reward play Francisco Conceição uh, Stavi Stacks great question here does your hobby value nosedive if you're signed by Bayern Munich kind of yeah yeah no one likes pins. once you get signed by Bayern Munich as far as most of the footballing world is concerned, you're out of the game. You're out of the game. You're just, oh, you're going to win the league. Yeah. And you're going to do it very efficiently and not very glamorously. Yeah. And whatever. Yeah. There's no, it's hard to know what to do when you go to Bayern. You might go on and have an amazing career. Yeah. a lot of trophies, win a few trebles. Yeah. But, yeah, it kind of does. I mean, but maybe not for Germans. Maybe not for the Germans. big Bayern fans are like, now I'm, the demand is up. Yeah. You just wouldn't know. It's tough. Um... So, uh, what transfer would you like to see for the hobby this summer? For the hobby, what transfer would you like to see? Mbappe. Mbappe is the main one. I'd like him to just move and stop yeah. having all this dancing around with yeah. uh, PSG and Real Madrid and everyone. Just today they were asking him, Pep Guardiola, is he going to Man City? And he said, you know where he's going. Mm. That's, what, that's what Pep said. I'd like to see Victor Osman. Move I feel like Napoli, you did it. You had your year, grand. Your, your manager left because he knew. Yeah. Now just let, let your top players leave. Just do it. Just break up the break up the break up the team. Break up the band. Have a have good memory and move. Tell you who I'd like to see move. Who? That Harry Kane. The Harry Kane lad. Just let him go. Go to Saudi Arabia. No, don't go to Saudi Arabia. Imagine let him go. trying to learn Saudi Arabian. Arabian. Arab. Arab. Jesus. I was Christ. just in I was in a Middle Eastern restaurant yesterday. Yeah? Unbelievable. Yeah. I like I'll, Middle I'll Eastern tell you about it off air. Tell you about it off the air. I know people love restaurant talk, but we're not going to get into it. Not today. No, it was unbelievable, though. It was everything it needed to be, Jason. Um, I'll bring you. I'd love to go. I have a list of places I need to bring you. Yeah, take me, take me all around. Show me a good time. Right. So, Bearhalter, good move. I believe the US uh, reappointed Greg Bearhalter for did. the 2026 World Cup. No, do you know what they did, Jason? What? If, if you're out of the loop, they hired a company to do a managerial search, and that company came back with the manager that they just fired. Brilliant. Unbelievable from that company. That's brilliant. Stuff. That's how you do the bare minimum. Yeah, do you know who I think it actually be? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah man. You, you know, you're man. never gonna. They got. They come and they go. You're never gonna get. It. I did all the stats. I did all yeah. the statistics. Now Ricardo Pepe has had a bit to say. Giorena. Giorena obviously had all that blackmail yeah. going on. 
uh, and is out there putting out assists to win trophies. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable stuff. Um, I don't love it. Uh, your man uh, Pulisic loves it. Yeah. He's delighted. Clearly loves the manager, you know. Um, I don't love it, but I also think United States are many a year away from where they want to be. Mm-hmm. And that he is kind of a fine intermediate manager. Yeah. Until then. It's okay. I mean, it's know? obviously not... It's not probably... It's not progressive. It's not progressive. It's, it's, that's the thing. It's not progressive, but I think this company that they employ obviously said, it's not progressive, but the place we were in the world last world, that was fine. He knows... It's the equivalent of, of, of hiring Frank Lampard to manage Chelsea. He knows the club. He knows the club. He'll put these boys together. We, we, we have... Like, I mean, he's are qualified for the next World Cup. Yeah. So there's no real... But no then way. it's like that's why you that's why you hire someone a bit ambitious. It's not you don't have to worry about. Yeah, but like that's it's. I think you're going for the safe bet. I think the United States are saying if we get out of the group stage in the next World Cup and put on a good showing in the round of sixteen or thirty two or whatever way the World Cup's going to be in twenty twenty six. Yeah, that's great. There's no shame in it. Mm. If we kind of risk it, sign it, sign a Stephen Kenny type character. Yeah. Oh God. Who could take Dundalk to the Europa League yeah. or whatever? But in reality gets picked apart by Greece yeah which is un- unacceptable yeah then you, you, the Americans will be snapping like, like Mexico are probably shitting bricks going into the World Cup because they've been in a shambles yeah they they're in, in a transition period and they need to transition fast they've been in a transitional period for a long long time and they need to get out of it yeah because they, they don't want to be made a show of in the World Cup and they don't have they don't they don't have the talent coming through the same way the States does no there's no follower in Balogun they're going to find playing I, in France I think they've gone with a safe move with, with their with their mind on the World Cup, if he lasts that long, it is a long time away. Um, and I think the whole idea is, and this might upset people in the states, but I think the whole idea is if we can just get out of the group in the World Cup and play decent football, that's a success, that's and that's enough. something we can build on. Yeah. And in the next 10, 20 years, we'll be able to compete a lot more. You know, you show you show the country a competitive team. If if if, if this World Cup just gone was actually like the America World Cup. And all the Americans got to really rally behind that team for those three games. Tyler Adams, everything he was doing. Four games, sorry. That would have been a huge success for just like inspiring a nation. Mm. Do you know? Yep. So I think that might be what they employed. The, the company came to that conclusion, maybe. It says you could start a managerial search company. Jesus. You say that and you start kicking so I would appoint myself the manager of the States. 100%. You'd be my... my uh, Assistant manager? Absolutely. Be great. It would be unbelievable. That'd be good fun. Um, and Gio Reyna would play, boys. Don't worry. We get him in there. Yeah. No need to be concerned. I don't know. <laughs> You're not sure? I'm not sure. I don't, I don't like the way he trains. Uh, Bibrasfi asks, "What's the who's the rookie in... Who's the 2022-23 rookie that's been most overlooked? I don't think people have fully internalised that Randall Connell and is about to be sold for about 80 million euros. But in fairness, he hasn't even had his rookie come out yet in Bundesliga Chrome because hasn't dropped. That's true. That's true. Uh, I think Julian Alvarez, although I also don't believe he's a rookie this year. Yeah. So Julian Alvarez, if you have a rookie that has a, a top snow card holding a Champions League trophy, he probably had a good rookie year. Mm. Um, but I think his rookie fundamentally is in a River Plate kit. Yeah. And quite frankly, just out of coolness, out of culture. Yeah, a bit of culture. Out of footballing heritage and out of culture. Yeah. You have a rookie card of a man that's just gone on to win the World Cup, move to Man City, win the treble. He's an Argentinian and he's in a River Plate kit. A bit, one of the most iconic kits around. In world football. And you're telling me you're not going to respect that rookie card? Yeah. I, I oh, oh, No. No. no For good. me, that's the most overlooked. And that's obviously, it's so overlooked that it's not even in the 22-23 season. But I hate it. Uh, Makes me angry. E.T. asks, Will and should Manchester City be punished for cheating? No. Uh, they should be but they're not they probably won't ever be punished because if well it would never probably make I mean it's going to be years before we find out the result of the Premier League's um, inquiry but like once you start pulling at that thread hmm. I feel like by the time that comes out the takeover of, of football by state backed interests is going to be so complete that you know what are you going to do punish every club yeah, I think we're on a pretty much a slippery uh, slope. Yeah, we're we're, we're on a da- in a downward spiral with this sport. Um, and there's been a lot of great moments. And so, in terms of final thoughts on the season, I'll, gi- I'll 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 give mine and you can give yours. Okay. Or do you want to do the way around? No, no, you give yours. Go. 
my feeling this season has been first of all I've watched less football this season than I watched in the two or three seasons beforehand uh, and part of that has been uh, just the amount of uh, travelling we've been doing with Soccer United mm. um, on weekends on weekends when the football is but also I think I've enjoyed obviously Messi winning the World Cup was fantastic but the the whole World Cup itself was a completely exhausting circus I thought mm. um, and I just and Man City and all that and I'm just tired of so many things in football having an asterisk beside them for being so blatantly uh, wrong and it's like at what point if you just keep doing fucked up stuff and everyone just keeps making excuses for it at what point does it become something else entirely at what point are you not even really watching football you're watching some sort of like doped up Frankenstein's monster of a you know Atletico not doing too well this year no I just I uh, okay, well, I put, put down a very good valid point that's football Twitter that's football Twitter that, and that, that actually that whole that whole interaction sums up why I'm struggling with this board <laughs> basically um, I enjoyed some of the pure parts of the sport, Jason. Yeah, so did I. I so did I. By the way, um, but it's it's it it was in spite of all the good parts. It's getting it's hard and it's getting harder. That's what I'll say for me and football. My sad moments in the World Cup was uh, Brazil getting knocked out. Yeah, because uh, Neymar had a real moment. Mm-hmm. And it was beautiful. And it was they, beautiful. They just completely fucked it. It seemed like that was going to be like Neymar's moment. Moment. And just to get even further in the, I think that would have put him in the semi final, maybe. Yep. Uh, which would have been cool. And then same with Ronaldo's Portugal. I think Ronaldo had such a circus going into the World Cup that, like, had he just scored a few goals in the World Cup, beat Morocco, got into a semi final against France, that would have been really cool. Yeah. Uh, so those two kind of story arcs upset me. Uh, Frosin only getting promoted to the Serie A. Magic. Magic. Beautiful. Pure. There's still, ma- still purity in Serie B. There you go. Our manager has resigned since because he kind of knows. I'm not I'm not. He's pulling with. a Spalletti. Yeah, he's saying I'm, that's it. A lot of Italian managers have started to go, I've done it, I have my accolade, I'm not going to stick around and suffer like, yeah. like Roberto Mancini. You won a trophy, go away. Yeah. Respect yourself. Don't yeah, the, just the, the, tarnish your reputation. The fall of Mancini's Italy has given a kind of a a, a, a lesson to everyone in oh, Italy. Oh, cautionary tale for cautionary a, tale. all Italian managers. So Fabio Grosso got us promoted in beautiful fashion, the first time we've ever won the second division. Yeah. Uh, we've come up with such attack and football, such a beautiful, youthful team, amazing. And I was very excited to see that kind of kick on mm-hmm. next season, but he has left, uh, which, which which upset me. Uh, AC Milan having a wonderful season in Europe until the very end. Yep. Was wonderful. Raphael Leo. Semi-finalist. Yeah. Raphael Leo having a, having a great year. Mm-hmm. Um, Messi winning the World Cup made me very happy, even though they put that horrible uh, coat on him thing, the yep. robe. That was horrible. Bad times. Luton getting promoted. I'll give them that that credit. That was good fun. That was good fun. Luton getting promoted. West Ham winning a European competition. But beyond that, Sevilla winning another Europa League. Yeah. Um, I actually have just a list. The top of the hobby, a couple of winners and losers. Okay. Winners uh, hobby wise this season, and this could be like the players are winners and people having the car- holding the cards are winners. Okay. Obviously, anyone went Haaland. Haaland, massive hobby winner this season. Absolutely. Messi, oh, huge hobby winner this season. Tremendously big. Also, can't forget this, Pele. Mm. Pele unfortunately passed away. <laughs> He's a big winner. It's over. Like the Pele, car- the Pele autographs are done. Are done. Just about done. Just about done. Wow. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, losers, Mbappe. Mbappe wasted another year. How do you die and end up a winner? Yeah, well, <laughs> Mbappe, I think, hobby wise, wasted another year. Yeah, facts. Although, in a, a World Cup, unbelievable performance. But his prices didn't. No, but still, unbelievable performance. No, brilliant. He, like, you know. But for some reason, nobody cares. You know, his on card autographs are in there, B. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then. Probably the biggest hobby loser of the, of the season, in terms of at the top of the hobby, was Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. Absolute nightmare season for Cristiano Ronaldo holders. It's like a nightmare, I would say. Yeah. You, you didn't expect it, the fall to be so big. No. Now, it, uh, we I believe we have reached... The floor. The floor, because one Mr. Gary Vaynerchuk yeah. came on to Twitter and said, I bought the floor. 
Yeah. I did it. He bought a PSA 10 rookie. I think I think the one that just went for 48,000. So Gary V said, this is, we go, we'll Gary go said, this low, but Gary no lower. Said, enough. Yeah. That's it. I'm calling it. That's it. Done. Yeah. And people tend to follow what he does. So, so that's good. That saves that a bit. But that was, yeah, big loser. Big loser. But anyway, listen. Next season, we'll, we'll be here. We're here all through the summer. I was thinking for the podcast during the summer, by the way, Enzo. Talk to me. Are we, are we sticking to the two episodes a week? Um, I mean, last format? week, there was no episodes. There was no episodes. I think we need to lock ourselves in this room. Yeah. And come up with a big plan for the summer. Yeah. We can do it. We can do it. No problem. Um, if we, if you're going to be in Hamburg this weekend, let us know. If you're going to be in Edinburgh for the Scotland Car Show the following weekend, let us know. We'll We're everywhere. Well. If you're going to be in Chicago, we will do the call for that in a couple of weeks. Yep. Um, we'll do I all... need to message my friend Ernesto. Oh, yeah. He's Show you around. Based in Chicago. Show us around. Show us around. That's what I mean. Yeah. What a thrill. All right. What a thrill. Thank you is. to everyone for sticking with us through the season. Thank you for not not upsetting us too much last week by by request to where we are. Yeah, I was sick. I was healing. Did my best. I've set such a standard of, of message responses, Jason. A lot of people freaking out, freaking out. Yeah, in disarray. Yeah, couldn't believe it. Because you, you you had to you know, you, that was like uh, you went a couple of games without scoring, and they were shook. And everyone's like, "Oh my God, is Haaland the right fit for City? This was yours, Haaland the right." But you're back. You're fine. You're fine. You're going with the travel. City worse with Haaland. Oh, not quite. Turned out. Guardiola figured it out. What a man. What a manager. What a manager. Big manager win. of the year. Big winner of the year. For me. All right. Ha ah. ha.